So folks, what I have for you in this one is massive because Trump just took a gargantuan loss at the legal level. And it's both in the sense that everyone knows he's cooked, his former lawyers, legal observers know he's cooked, but also the move that's been made by the courts today absolutely tears down this narrative that he is a god or a king or a noble above the peasantry that is the regular American citizen, which is of course what he and his cult believes, but also that it has absolutely taken away his position in the 2024 election. That what's happening in these clips, and it's a little bit convoluted, so it has to be explained, is that Donald Trump is done in 2024 because he's being booted from the ballot in an indirect way. It's not as direct as people might have expected, but in an indirect way, Donald Trump is being booted from the 2024 ballot. And the following explains it. Guys, watch every second of this because it really outlines how screwed he is. And guys, it's a shocking end. And I'm going to explain it at the end because I have something to say. I'm going to take my turn ripping into this SOB. But watch this. Ty Cobb is with me now, the former Trump White House lawyer. So, Ty, so much to talk about. I want to start with the immunity filing from Trump uh, coming late today. I know you've had a chance to read through it. Obviously, I know you don't think that he should have immunity, but now you're seeing their full argument that they want to put in front of the Supreme Court. Is it persuasive? I, not at all, Aaron. Uh, nice to be with you again. The, um, this, brief, this brief, this petition um, for a stay uh, is pretty weak. Uh, it's a repetitive uh, uh, of their um, br- briefs below, which uh, the arguments that they presented were not only soundly rejected, but you know, eviscerated both in oral argument and in the opinion. Um, I don't think the Supreme Court is going to find those arguments compelling in any way. Uh, the Supreme Court can do a variety of things here. Um, you know, they can grant or they can grant or deny the stay. If they grant the stay, um, you know, they will likely expedite um, uh, consideration of the um, case. They can turn the they can turn the stay petition into a um, uh, cert petition. Uh, and either grant or deny that, um, and they can do that very quickly, uh, or they could, you know, grant the stay and you know wait for Trump to file for cert, uh, which I don't think they will do. Um, I, I personally, um, and I may be in a you know, sharp minority, I personally don't see them taking this case. Um, although I do think it's a possibility they could consider the stay petition as a petition for cert. And stay the case for 28, or I'm sorry, 24 to 48 hours, mm. and then uh, uh, and then deny cert. Um, I think this case could be over this week, which would be uh, obviously hugely significant. And uh, and as you point out, denying cert would mean letting the lower court uh, obviously stand. So I know right. you have also tie uh, in the classified documents case. You have Trump there today, obviously there by choice. Again, right? These are all by choice. So he chose to be in that right. room behind closed doors with a judge that he happened to appoint, Eileen Cannon. Uh, and and the judge met with Trump's team. He was there and also with Jack Smith's team. Jack Smith's team. And, and, and right now this seems to be focused, and we don't know what happened behind closed doors, right, but on whether the Trump team will have access to the... Uh, of course, when you look at Trump's appeal to the Supreme Court here, as we read through this... One thing that stood out was how his attorneys cite the landmark case known as the United States versus Nixon four different times. At one point, his attorneys say that the Watergate case is a reason that they believe this trial should also be delayed. There's almost no one better to talk about the lessons from that case than my next guest here tonight, Richard Nixon's former White House counsel, John Dean. It's great to have you here, John. I wonder when you look at this, do you think Trump's attorneys are are missing the point of that case? Or what did you make of how many times it surfaced in this filing? Well, I've noticed they've drawn on the Nixon precedents uh, across the board. They, uh, we've had very few presidents who've been in front of uh, the Supreme Court. And the case they're drawing on, he actually was already out of office. Uh, the Fitzgerald case, which did give a president civil immunity. So I, and, and that sort of drew the line at official conduct or the outer perimeter uh, official conduct. So we've really never had the same issue. And the form that's coming to the court right now, Caitlin, is not the full case. They're asking for an application for a stay. They're asking that the Court of Appeals not send the case back 
to the D.C. trial judge. They want to hold that up until at least they file a, a, an appeal for the full court to come back up and take on the case again. It's a little confusing, I know, uh, but it's a unique opportunity if the Supreme Court wants to get rid of this case. That, st that request for stay, that application, went to the circuit justice who is Roberts in this, uh, Chief Justice Roberts. Mm -hmm. he, could, he could make a decision right now to chuck the whole thing. Yeah, it'll be fascinating because that would be probably the most dramatic outcome here, which, you know, we've... Very dramatic people outcome. Are, people are torn on, on whether or not that'll be the case. But if it does go to the Supreme Court, if they don't chuck the whole thing, you know, you testified at Justice Kavanaugh's confirmation hearing, and you talked about how you believed that if, if he was confirmed, that it would have, we would have the most presidential powers-friendly Supreme Court in the modern age. And so if it does go, you know, how do you think someone like a Justice Kavanaugh We'll look at the arguments that we were just talking about there with Jim Trustee. I think he generally looks favorably on presidential powers. He worked at the White House. Uh, he was in the council's office, in fact, uh, knows how the machine works and how to make it work better. Uh, he knows the restrictions that are on it. And his court has generally been very presidential uh, power pro uh, and favorable. So I think that, uh, but this is a different issue. This is really the responsibility of whether a president has any boundaries at all. Uh, so I, you know, I would be, I would be shocked if they, when they get to the substance of this case, if they grant immunity. It really would be a, really a dramatic change in the nature of the American presidency. It's yeah. actually a foundation for a dictatorship. Well, and reading, you know, Presidential powers is one thing, and thinking a president has power when it comes to climate change, executive orders, or, or something of that nature. But if he's someone you know who worked in the White House Counsel's Office, who who understands what the powers of the presidency are, I mean, could you see a Supreme Court justice looking at Trump's actions in Georgia and in Pennsylvania and, and what he did surrounding 2020, and thinking that that fits into the job description? No, I cannot. In fact, I think that he would find it abhorrent uh, behavior, uh, unacceptable for uh, a president. And so that, but, you know, I don't think that's the issue that's in front of him at the time, but he's certainly well aware of the underlying behavior. He's also aware, Caitlin, of the fact that Donald Trump is using the process to try to get out of this whole thing. If he thinks he can get reelected, by fooling enough people as to what he does and doesn't do and get back in office, that he can kill these cases. He can tell the, his attorney general of choice, kill the case, drop them. So the federal cases would go away. And they could put up a pretty good argument to tie up the state cases, at least while he remained in office. What would that mean for the presidency if he did that? If he did get in and we I mean, it's not that far-fetched if he did have the attorney general just make his cases disappear. Well, he has said he wants to be a dictator for one day. That's all it takes to change the American presidency. He'll have a stack of executive orders lined up that will, in fact, make the presidency a dictatorship, even if he doesn't call it that. If he just says, I have a, uh, a modernized the American presidency, giving him powers the likes of which we've never known in, in the American presidency. The checks and balances would go away. He'd be unleashed, and I think we'd be in trouble as a country. Argument ...that Trump has presidential immunity for his actions in the lead-up to and on the day of the January 6th insurrection. If the Supreme Court denies Trump's request, the case would go back to Washington-based Judge Tanya Chutkin. Earlier this month, she delayed the March 4th trial date until the question of Trump's immunity is decided. Let's bring in former litigator and MSNBC legal correspondent, Lisa Rubin. Lisa, good morning. Good to see you. So Trump's team Hi, going to the Supreme Court with this question. What's your sense of how it'll play out? Well, first of all, the question, as you correctly noted, was that Trump wants a stay from the Supreme Court, which would mean not letting the case go back to Judge Chetkin for pretrial proceedings and preparation for a trial that would take at least several more weeks. My inclination is that that's not going to happen for a couple of reasons. One is that in order to get a stay from the Supreme Court, you have to make a very specific showing. You have to show that you have a likelihood of winning your appeal 
and you have to show that you would be irreparably harmed by the case going forward. And in both cases, I think Trump will fall short of the five votes that he will need to get a stay. It's ordinary Supreme Court math that you need four justices to grant review, but five justices to grant a stay. And it's hard for me to see how he gets that, particularly given my review of this petition. And Lisa, what would be the timeline on this here? Timeline is anything that the Supreme Court wants it to be. This is a Supreme Court that can move with all deliberate speed when it chooses to. Time between Florida Supreme Court decision and Bush v. Gore and the United States Supreme Court decision is four days, and that includes briefing and oral argument. On the other hand, this Supreme Court could hold on to this case for some time. They could grant a stay, for example, and then ask for briefing on a cert petition, taking weeks and weeks schedule oral argument far out, perhaps even beyond June. I don't think that's going to happen, but the timing here, John, is entirely in the Supreme Court's own hands. Certainly the Trump team rooting for uh, delays. Um, let's turn to some of the other Trump legal matters. There are so many. Um, there's going to be a new closed door hearing in the Trump classified documents case down in South Florida this morning. What's your sense as to what, what's going to happen there? So yesterday, Judge Cannon heard from both sides but separately, and she had heard even last week from the special counsel's office. They had three hours alone with her to talk about what classified information in particular they wanted to withhold from former President Trump and his two co-defendants. Yesterday, she seems to have heard a lot from the Trump side and then from the special counsel. Today, she's bringing together the special counsel's office with lawyers only for Trump's co-defendants, Walt Nauta and Carlos de Oliveira. The government was expected to argue that neither Mr. Nauta nor Mr. de Oliveira, who are ordinary citizens, should have access to any of the 5,000 plus pages of classified information in that case. And so here's the thing. Donald Trump's immunity is going to fail and he's going to be convicted. And whether or not he's, you know, formally tossed from the ballot, it's going to lead to a GOP exodus. We've seen the polling. Donald Trump is effectively removed from the election if he's convicted and he can be convicted if he's not immune. And so the Supreme Court can allow him on the ballot. But if they allow the legal system to work as intended, and as we've seen, they're moving faster than maybe Trump would like on the question of immunity, then Donald Trump loses. Remember, he loses and he gets booted just by the cases happening. So watch this, because Donald Trump is going to line up perfectly, whereas the election really kicks off, he's going to be a convicted convict.